In this week's news, LG's G4S specs are leaked, YouTube's top star banks seven million dollars, and GoPro's Hero Plus LCD and Hero 4 Session are launched in South Africa. All this and more on Bandwidth Blog this week. I'm Tienis van Rensburg, and next to me I've got Brian Smith, and welcome to the first episode of Bandwidth Blog on Air. Welcome to Bandwidth Blog on Air, the weekly podcast of bandwidthblog.com. Hi, Brian, and thanks for joining me. Thanks, Tienis. I'm glad to be here. Welcome to the first episode of Bandwidth Blog on Air. We want to share the latest tech news, opinions, and gadgets with you in our new podcast, and we hope you enjoy the journey with us. LG has seen quite a resurgence in the last couple of years, Brian, um, and I see that um, they're going to bring out a sibling to the G4 smartphone. What details do we have on that? The G3, which is LG's prior flagship, was accompanied by the G3S, also known in South Africa as the G3 Beat, which was a smaller sibling device. Now, from what we've heard in a recent leak, um, LG are planning to bring out the G4S, which is to be a very similar sibling device to the LG G4. Okay, and um, what kind of specs can we expect? Because the G3 Beat was a bit um, t- uh, well toned down from the G3, if I'm not mistaken. From the leak, what we're looking at is a mid-range smartphone. It's not going to be anything to blow the wallet to pieces, but it looks like it should be a fairly stable contender. We're going to see it powered by a Snapdragon 615 chip and an octa-core 1.4 gigahertz processor. So it's a slight upgrade from the G3S. What's going to be really interesting is that LG seem to have balanced out the cameras and this is probably for more mid-range consumers. We're going to be seeing a 4.8 megapixel front-facing camera and a 7 megapixel uh, primary camera. Now that's a huge step in a different direction because the G3 Beat had a 8 megapixel primary camera and a 1.3 front-facing camera. So it looks like LG are trying to balance out that camera situation a bit. That's really interesting. Um, And another question I have is, what are we expecting in terms of the design? Um, Will it follow the G4's uh, design language uh, in regards to that uh, leather back? We don't know terribly much about that at present. Uh, It's not confirmed if the G4S is going to receive a leather back. But if we look at the trend that followed from the G3 to the G3 Beat, it should roughly follow the same design language. What we're going to end up seeing is that it's probably going to have slightly larger bezels. Okay, and then, of course, this being a mid-range device, the price will always be um, an interesting point to talk about. Um, Do we have any indications of what it will cost? Um, And that leather back, presumably, would make it a little bit more expensive than it needs to be. If LG decide to include that leather back, I would estimate that it will be a slightly more expensive phone than the G3 Beat. But I'd be willing to place my money pardon the pun, on the fact that LG would probably price it around 5,000 Rand, make it a proper mid-range entry similar to the G3 Beat. Well, tennis and other news, YouTube's biggest star has generated quite a bit of revenue. That's right, Brian, and he's actually copped a lot of criticism because of that from the internet. As you know, the internet can be an ugly place sometimes. But um, yes, he's a 24-year-old Swedish gamer. Um, his name is Felix Kelberg, but he likes to call himself PewDiePie, or more accurately, PewDiePie. And um, it's been reported that in 2014, he made um, $7.4 million in revenue just from his, um, from his YouTube channel. Now, as you can imagine, a lot of people can't understand how you can make so much money by making what many call very simple, um, not very intelligent videos. But, I mean, that's just where YouTube is going, and that's the kind of business that YouTube has become. It's become more um, of a platform for entertainment uh, entertainment or production companies, um, or just individuals that like to make videos. Um, And Google has given them that platform so that they can make revenue. Of course, uh, Google has created this platform on YouTube that people can upload content, um, whether it be vlogs or actually very high production content, um, and they uh, they can create a business like that. It's actually quite interesting that people can make this much money off of YouTube, but that is just the platform that Google has provided these content creators. Um, So it's everything from vlogs to to very high quality content, um, short stories, um, even films in some cases. And uh, they make their money um, by getting a small slice of the pie of the ad revenue that Google makes off of your views. So the question is now, Tienis, do you foresee platforms like YouTube being the new place where stars are made, as it were? Well, definitely, and it's already happened. Um, we've seen a couple of 
big names on YouTube cross over to more traditional media channels. A couple of people that had big YouTube channels, or still do, um, has crossed over to reality TV, for example. Um, one of them has her own chat show on, on, on uh, E! Entertainment. So, I mean, there, there is that possibility. And not only the crossover, but YouTube is becoming a platform where you can stay on YouTube and be a big star. You don't necessarily need to cross over to another platform. Now, what does YouTube's monetization program, which they've just recently introduced, what does that mean for the average consumer? Well, for the consumer, it doesn't mean much. Nothing really changes. Um, we'll just see the ads on the videos as we've always done. Um, but it does change the picture a little bit for the content creator. Um, they are actually going to start getting a little bit more of the revenue that Google is making off of these, uh, off of these ads. Other interesting news is that GoPro has launched a couple of new products and you were at the launch event. Yes, I was. Um, the 6th of July saw the company release both the GoPro Hero 4 Session and the Hero Plus LCD at a private event that took place at the Silvermist Estate in Constantia. Um, that's in a venue that's sort of situated in the hilly terrain of the Constantia Neck in between Constantia and Hout Bay in Cape Town. And what can you tell us about the event? Uh, well, what took place is that myself, a lot of journalists and marketers were treated to a zipline experience over the Constantia Nick, and we were filmed using these GoPro cameras. Uh, and it was a really great uh, demonstration of how popular these cameras have become and how easy they are to use. So tell us more about the product. Okay, well, GoPro have released two new cameras, and this is sort of making up the mid and bottom end of their product line. So at the very, very, very bottom, we've got the Hero Plus LCD, which is what you'd imagine as a typical GoPro camera in appearance uh, that shoots 1080p video, has a touch LCD display, uh, and has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for easy connectivity to a companion device such as a smartphone. On the other hand, we have the mid-range Hero 4 Session, which is frankly the tiniest camera I've ever seen. It's about the size of a massive sugar cube. Really? Um, and... GoPro is claiming that it's up to 50% smaller and 40% lighter. Now, this does pretty much what a GoPro camera will do, is that it'll shoot 1080p video, but this new one will shoot at 1440p, which is a huge upgrade for GoPro. And uh, what's really great is that it also has a dual mic system. So it has one mic at the front and one mic at the back, and the camera will intelligently swap between mics to pick up the cleanest sound. And are they uh, pitching these devices at different market segments, at different people, different activities? I think what they are trying to compete with is the likes of the TomTom Tom Bandit, which has just been released. And this more kind of, it's not so much intended to branch into a lower price bracket as it is, I think, appeal to customers who are maybe considering, I don't need a GoPro, maybe I can go to another brand. Um, what they've done here is that the cheapest one, what they're both speculating, is that they're going to be around 5,000 Rand, which is still a lot of money for the camera. Uh, and what it's going to be is it's going to be the most affordable entry into the line. Right. So, so they're basically upgrading the device and just lowering the price, in essence. More or less. And I think the intent here is that they're really trying to focus on the technology inside the GoPro, whereas it's always been about the experience you'll have with the camera. Review Spotlight, where we discuss our thoughts on the latest review devices to reach our hands. In upcoming reviews, Brian, I've actually been using the LG G4 for about three or four weeks now, and the review will be coming out soon. And it's an absolutely stunning device to behold. I've got the, le the one with the leather back, um, and I think it is really a device that people should set up and notice because I think it could shake up the markets in South Africa. Do, do take us through, how does that leather back feel in hand? It's it's so so difficult to describe it because it's so unique. It's so um, it, it's so much different than anything else out there. Even compared to, for example, the leather bags that was on the Moto X, it feels completely different. Um, it's genuine leather. The uh, middle of of the back is is hand stitched, um, and it, it it just feels so much different than anything else. It it feels comfortable to hold. It feels luxurious and plush. Um, it, it's really interesting. Now, the other attraction on the back is that camera. Do you take us through that? Yes, I mean, the camera is, is one of the biggest talking points. Um, the Before the LG G4 came out, the Samsung Galaxy S6 is pro, was probably renowned as having the best Android uh, camera, uh, or the best camera on Android. And I have to say that the, the G4's camera is is great. It's brilliant. I think it might be in there with a shot of being the best, phone on, uh, the best camera phone on Android. 
Now, in relation to the G3, which is still a fairly recent phone, what's the difference in hand? Is it a wider phone? What's, is there any display size changes? Do you notice any different feeling beyond that leather back? Well, other than the leather back, uh, there is some slight differences. Uh, you still have that curved back as you had on the G3, but the bezels are slightly larger. So it does feel a little bit larger in the hand. But that being said, it is also slightly curved. So there is a very, very slight curve on the on the display on the front of the on the front of the phone, which makes it very comfortable to to uh, uh, make phone calls with. Um, it's not the extreme curve you see on the G Flex Two, um, which LG also brought out earlier in this year. But um, it it actually does make a difference in, in in making phone calls. But that being said, overall it feels very much like the G three. Um, it, you'll only the only difference you'll really need to get used to is that leather back. Um, but it's a it's a great difference to get used to. Be sure to check out bandwidthblog.com um, over the next week or so when we'll publish the full review. Um, and we'll discuss all the ins and outs of the device, um, the specs, the features, um, and the overall feeling. Um, but it is it is quite positive. I can tell you that. You've got your hands on an interesting new device from South African company AG Mobile, Brian. Tell us about it. I do. I've got my hands on the AG Mobile Ghost, which is the company's new flagship device. Uh, the Ghost is a 5.5-inch Android uh, smartphone. What I've really got to emphasize to you is how great the unboxing experience was. How's that? Uh, well, you know, I once read about, an, about Apple's packaging that the whole packaging ethos is meant to be designed around the fact that you're getting a gift from a master craftsman. And that's really what I found with the AG Mobile Ghost. All right, so you open up the Ghost, and in this beautiful leather box you get, it comes with uh, a 7500 milliamp hour battery pack, a phone case, in-ear headphones, three USB cables, um, a wall and car charger, as well as two film screen protectors. Wow, that's interesting. It's, it's really a move from them, I think, to build up brand loyalty in South Africa, which I, I think is a, something a lot of South African consumers will appreciate. It's really an experience to open up this and get everything that you'd have to go about and normally buy separately for a new smartphone. Um, the phone itself, I'm really enjoying. But funnily enough, it is one of the first Android phones that run stock Android that I've wished could have come with a skin on it. How's that? Just expand on that a little bit. Well, AG Mobile have really tried to stay out of Android's way. So when you open up the Ghost and you power it on for the first time, you are getting the stock 4.4.2 uh, KitKat experience. And that's not a bad thing, but when you open it up as a South African, I think many South Africans won't proceed to customize the device or put their own icons or their own launcher um, on it. I think um, maybe a, few, a good few will, but let's say the majority of consumers aren't going to. And for the average consumer, it's really quite a stock device it really begs you it's got this beautiful 5.5 screen which is all this real estate to play with and it's really really stock stock boring android you really want to see a crop of color come up there all right okay and um just tell us a little bit about the build quality how does it feel in hand it feels really really great um to be honest with you it actually smacks to me either of the iphone 6s or the htc 1m9 from the front it comes in a rose gold finish which i find could be a little bit feminine doesn't bother me particularly um the case you get is rose gold and brushed aluminium so it kind of hides the back anyway but it's a really decent feeling hand and phone it fits comfortably into the pocket it's slightly large at 5.5 but i think if you're going to be looking to buy a 5.5 inch phone i think it's, it's a great contender at the moment and uh, do you have any details on pricing in the country well, what we're expecting, and um, there's been no concrete word yet, but from what I can tell you is that the rumor is it's going to be available on contract from roughly about 350 Rand per month from Celsi. And do you think they can compete at that price point? It seems relatively close to high-end smartphones. The Ghost is a mid to premium range device, so it's going to be situated somewhere in there. Whether it's going to be enough to get South Africans interested, I don't know. But I think from just from the brand experience of opening up the package with all the gifts you get, I think we're going to see some interest. Well, great. Um, I look forward to the review. Well, that's all for this week's episode of Bandwidth Blog On Air. Thank you for joining us for our premiere episode, and we look forward to bringing you the latest tech news, opinions, and reviews straight to your ears. We'd like the show to be driven by you, our readers, so if there's anything specifically you'd like us to discuss, review, or share, do drop us a line at editor at bandwidthblog.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.
You've been listening to Bandwidth Blog On Air, the weekly podcast of bandwidthblog.com.